Hey guys. Yeah, yesterday I did my package opening. You saw that in my package opening. Um, I recently got the 4K 32-inch QLED or QLED uh, television from Samsung, courtesy of Amazon. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are still curious as to how it's possible that that could even you know be available. Well, it's not just Amazon that's selling it. Best Buy is also selling it. And I'm sure if you go online, only online or through online, you can get it through places like Walmart and Target as well and even Kohl's. Uh, but yeah, I ended up getting it. And uh, my personal opinion, I could be wrong about this because, of course, like a lot of us, I wasn't there when they probably came up with this idea. Uh, but my personal opinion is I think they realized that the 4K monitors, which were smaller than the regular 4K televisions, which were basically, basically the 4K monitors were about the size of this, which and this is a 24-inch television. Uh, they probably realized, that, or probably noticed, and real, probably noticed, I should say, that the 4K monitors were selling more than some of the televisions because they were cheaper and more compact for people that had, like, you know, their own rooms, their own bedrooms and everything. And um, and they wanted to have 4K in their room without having to, you know, move a lot of stuff around, especially with a small room like what mine is. I mean, my room's a little bit bigger, though, I, should, I will say, than this one, but, but still, it's still a small room. But they probably realized, hey, you know, we need to, um, you know, we need to uh, basically, um, hold on. You know, they probably realized, so some of them realized, in my opinion, that they needed to probably do something about, you know, getting the sales up for the 4K, mon 4K televisions, I should say. And just my opinion, because like I said, I wasn't there. I think someone went to the higher ups and suggested the idea, maybe even showed, showed them um, some uh, blueprints and all that of how they could compact a 4K resolution into a smaller television. Because, you know, he probably pointed out, they, I should say, probably pointed out, hey, if we can do that at, along with other companies, you know, for the monitors, why can't we do that for the televisions? And I think once they made the point, their case, it got greenlit. Samsung said, go ahead and do it. Uh, maybe they even said, oh, and by the way, add that new QLED or OLED uh, technology as well to really sell it, to really get people to buy it or, you know, consider it. And that's what they, in my opinion, I think that's what happened. Again, I wasn't there. You know, I wasn't there. But I think that's what happened. I think someone noticed that the 4K monitors, not just with Samsung, but with other companies, were selling more than the televisions especially the smaller ones, because they were more compact and everything, they were more convenient and cheaper, that they decided, hey, let's do the same thing with, why not try to do the same thing with television and see what happens. And again, I think they got the okay, and maybe one of the bosses said, hey, add this new QLED or OLED technology to it, and that will really entice them. And, and to, in my opinion, the rest is history. I know, it sounded like a little jumbled mess there, didn't it? But again, my point is, I think someone just came up with the idea uh, due to the fact that they probably saw that sales for the 4K televisions, the big ones, were going down and that, the one, and that sales for the monitors, 4K, the small ones, were going up. And they just decided to, you know, present an idea to go the direction of, hey, let's, do, let's try taking that same idea that we and other companies have done with the monitors and apply it to television and see what happens. And like I said, the rest is history. I think when they presented the idea, not only did it get greenlit at Samsung, but maybe one of the higher ups suggested adding the new QLED or OLED uh, technology along with it. But anyway, to get to the point, uh, yesterday after I did my package opening, I opened up the box, set it up, did everything as instructed, um, and I'm going to say this, honestly, it's not as easy as some people say it is, because <laughs> here's the thing, just when I thought I had everything set up and ready to go, and, you know, I was getting ready to turn it on to set it up like that as well, because when you turn on a new TV, you got to set it up like that, you got to set them up, you got to take that next step and set it up, I should say. Uh, what happened is I thought I had gotten a broken television. I'm thinking, why isn't it going on? And by the grace of God, because I was like, God, please help me out here. Lord, help me out here. Um, I looked behind my television, and I noticed that the plug, 
the plug, and I'll show you what I mean by example here. Uh, if I can just uh, zoom in on that, hold on. Like that plug right there, that plug right there, that's the uh, that's the uh, power plug. Oops, hold on. That's the uh, power plug for this television. And um, so imagine that being, you know, out of that area, being out of its uh, socket, if you will, or not connected to the back and the in connected to the input portion of the back. Yeah, that's kind of what happened with the 4K television here. Basically, long story short, when I thought I had everything set up, the only thing that was missing or was not, you know, accounted for was even though I had the AC part uh, connected to my surge protector, the prong AC AC part connected to my surge protector, what happened was the part that connects to the TV to help, you know, power it on, what had come loose because I didn't push it in right. I didn't push it in tightly or anything like that. So yeah, it came loose. And so I had to uh, reconnect it and go from there. Now, unfortunately though, some sacrifices had to be made, but not entirely because before I came on here uh, and after various different attempts with my GoPro camera to do a video uh, before I had to end up charging it, I realized, wait a minute, and I even realized this when doing one of the original recordings that I did with the GoPro before erasing it, uh, I realized, wait a minute, I don't have to worry too much about the PlayStation 4 and video capturing it because of the fact that the video, the, uh, not the video capture, but the fact that I can go online on YouTube and basically live stream my my games and you know not have to worry about anything else the only thing that's going to be a sacrifice if anything is the video capture device now i could still utilize it for perhaps my super retrocade and my xbox one uh, s and nintendo switch i could probably do it with that not saying it's going to happen i pro but i probably could because long story short, what happened was my original idea was to just connect the HDMI switch to uh, to the back of the thing, I should say, and go from there. But because of the fact that I think there was some kind of technological or technical confusion internally, circuit-wise, uh, with between the switcher, the video capture, and the television, it didn't work. So I had to basically result into connecting. Um, the uh, PlayStation to the third HDMI input and it worked. And what's funny though, and what's funny though is when I did that, all of a sudden another app came up. Because when you connect these things to certain HDMI ports, uh, an, an app will come up. And you want to talk about a smart TV. This thing, the moment I went to HDMI 3, it immediately recognized my PlayStation. It immediately recognized it and immediately communicated with the PlayStation to have it automatically go to HDR, which is high dynamic range, go to HDR, and that's it. You know, basically, it automatically had to go to all, automatically switch over to all the settings necessary for 4K or high dynamic range television. The only thing that it kept staying at was 1080p. The reason being is because of the fact that, well, my PlayStation is not a PS Pro, which is 4K. The one that's a 4K is my Xbox One S. Uh, excuse me there. But anyway, like I said, what happened is I think there was a bit of confusion because uh, basically the video capture device that I have, which I now guess I could save for future use, the video capture here. Uh, if I can show you, uh, the video capture here, as you could see, the, this is the input. This is where the PS4 would go or any other game system or whatever I would need would go. And then this was the output that went into HDMI switch number three. And I think what happened is there was a bit of confusion and it didn't read it. But what's funny is when I connected uh, the HDMI when I connected the HDMI for the Blu-ray 
to uh, HDMI 2, it recognized it um, automatically. It recognized the switcher. Uh, well, not the switcher, but it automatically recognized the Ultra Blu-ray and thus recognized the switcher. So now I can use HDMI 2 to basically go and uh, play uh, my Blu-ray, play my DVD, play my Ruko, play my Xbox One S, or whatever. So it, I'm able to finally, you know, I'm able to do that. So it kind of cleans up some wire messes, if you will, that I was worried about. Because basically, uh, basically the wired messes, um, if you will, and you kind of see what the remnants were, were like all over the place. So this kind of opens the door a little bit. I mean, there's still some. Don't don't get me wrong. There's still some there. Like um, like my Nintendo Switch and everything is still one of them that, you know, eventually, like the Switch here uh, still needs to, you know, be connected and all that. But everything else seems to be okay. The only other problem, though, is these now the speakers and the system's not dead or anything so don't don't worry about that it's not dead or anything okay it, it's not dead what happened is it seems that when i put on a 4k movie that's when they operate that's when they come on and they operate i, I noticed that last night i was thinking did something happened to the speakers blow no it's only when you put on a movie like this that they come on and they sound good. They sound really good. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's the only sacrifice that the only movies that I'll be able to listen to in surround sound, believe it or not, is the 4K. Uh, it's basically the 4K um, Ultra Blu-rays. Now, again, I don't know if the rest could be said for the other ones. I'll have to look at that, but I think it's mostly 4K Ultra Blu-ray. So, yeah, those are the only sacrifices. So that's the only, like I said, the only sacrifices and changes that need to be made to get things working. Now, again, I don't know if the video capture will still be workable. I think it should be because I think the only thing that was holding uh, it back with the PlayStation was when I, like I said earlier, when I connected the PlayStation to the third HDMI port, it read it. It read it automatically. So... Yeah, that I had to do that. Uh, and again, just I'm sure a lot of you know this. If you had a 4K, if you got recently got a 4K television, did you have to go through a lot of different changes and all that to get it to to work? Um. Uh, with that said, though, what what happened? What occurred to make this all happen? Well, basically, um, you know, as you know, as I mentioned before, I was let go over a month ago. Um, I, I still originally planned, to, even when I was working, to, to get a 4K television, but I knew that, um, excuse me, I knew that basically I wouldn't get one for a while because of the fact that I was, unless there was another stimulus or another big bonus, um, I would still be with the uh, television in here, which again, no problem, I enjoyed it. This thing has lasted me and my family for a long time. In fact, I got this, I think, about a year or two before we moved from Patterson to Newman. Anyway, getting back on point here, though, uh, getting back on point. Um, what happened was when you lose any, when you're let go from any big job or any big company, one of the things that you should invest in, just in case something happens, is 401k. I mean, even the company suggests that you do that, and that's what I did. I invested in a 401k. I think about my second or third year in. Going into my third year, I think. Or was it my second? I think it might have been my second year. I can't remember. And over time, it built up. It didn't build up to something like in the thousands or anything. I and mean, if we would have done that, they are, you know, according to my sister, I should keep that in there. But it didn't. It built up to basically about around, uh, 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 basically around 820 something. 820 something, I'll put it like that. And. When I decided to take it out, because what Merrill Lynch, which is the 401k provider for Walmart and other big corporations out there, and a Bank of America company, what they did is they sent me a letter saying I needed, I had until today to you know take some action, and either withdraw or do something, or else I was going to be charged in a big way. And so that's what I did. I made the decision, I went online, registered, everything, did what I had to do. 
um, and long and basically to the point, you know, got him to send me my um, payment that I built up, basically my 401k payment to me. And it was around the same time that I also ended up getting my first or second, um, I think it was maybe my second uh, EDD payment as well. And together, combined wise, it was about maybe 14, nearly 15. Well, halfway, I would say legitimately halfway from 1500, uh, basically one, basically halfway from 1500. And that allowed me to not only do some grocery shopping, but it also allowed me to pay off the cable finally, get it to 0, 0.00, uh, which my mom likes to see because it's like, you know, for, you know, it's like, why can't we keep up with this? And, you know, it's like, finally was, I, I was able to do it. You know, finally I was able to do it. Ironically, after I'm off, I'm let go from my job. I mean, yeah, I'd been able to pay off the cable several times even when I was working, but this is like the first time in a long time I was able to do it. So, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to do all that. And it's like God just put, you know, pointed me in the direction of this television because I wanted to, I wanted to get, get one, but I wanted to have one that was small enough to where I wouldn't have to move too many things. And lo and behold, this came to to my attention. This came to my attention. And yes, Best Buy has it as well. And I didn't find this out until after I ordered it. But it probably would have cost more anyway because they would charge a fee that would basically make what I spent on Amazon a lot more than what be a lot more more than you know it should be. Uh, basically more than what I paid on Amazon. That's what I'm trying to say. So Again, to get to the point, um, to get to the point, uh, basically God gave me the opportunity. He, you know, of course I, you know, I, I, you know, I was punished for what I did, you know, at my job, um, which was wrong to do, but, you know, and in my opinion still it was more justified with a suspension than anything else. And again, he opened the door for me to get the finances I needed through EDD, the 401k, and now very soon my YouTube. So I was, you know, I'm just thankful for all that. And again, like I said, it was enough for me to pay off the cable, do a little shopping, and then get uh, the, the television that I did. And uh, like I said, I got it yesterday, I set it up, and then, what changed, what changes occurred, well, originally, I had plans to uh, basically do this. This was the original plan, guys. This was the original plan. Uh, this was the original plan, was to put my TV, which is, which I did, put my TV in here, and then take the monitor, which is in here, the on monitor, the O-N-N, -N, which is a Walmart brand or licensed brand uh take the on monitor which is right here and the original plan basically was to have the mon uh, the on monitor right here where the printer is and then uh basically take the printer and uh put it like right here where this fan is since we you know since we're not using the fan that much anymore right now you know, put it right there, and, you know, basically that would be it, because my plan, and it still will come to pass, was to have my mom to come in here, put her computer either up here or down here, um, if you will, either up here or down here, you know, have her, you know, have her do that, hook it up via HDMI like I have mine hooked up, and basically... Uh, allow her to in the future because there are things coming up that she needs to um, probably utilize the computer with uh, very soon maybe on camera zoom calls or something like that with her job who knows uh, but basically the plan and it still could come to fruition is for her to you know have this as a more brighter screen for her to see now now, basically, that was the original plan. However, let's just say that um, 
when I basically set it all up, I had second thoughts. And I started realizing, well, I'll make it, I'll be honest with you. I, basically, I, I had it set up, ready to go. You know, everything was cool. Everything was good. Printer was over here on a tray. Monitor was right here. Everything was all set up. And when I showed my mom, uh, let's, um, she understood. She appreciated it. But she also said, she, but then she asked me that even though she understood and appreciated what I was trying to do, that she would just want things back to normal. Like it would be a little too confusing for her and a little too um, cluttery, in her opinion, um, to have in this room. So she asked me basically to change it all back, and that's what I did. Even though she was very appreciative and understood what I was trying to do, she asked me just to kind of switch things back because it was going to be, it felt, she basically felt a little off. It felt a little off, a little bit, a little bit like it just didn't seem right to her. So, you know, that's what I did. And I took the monitor and I put it in here, so I could kind of demonstrate to her exactly what I was talking about because I have the HDMI connected here to here. So, you know, that way I can give her an idea of what I was, what I, oh, I could show her, which I did, what the idea or what the plan was for her in the future. Um, but basically, yeah, that's, that's what, that's basically what happened originally. And again, even though she was very appreciative and thankful and understanding, she asked me just to change it back because she just felt a little, it felt a little off to her. It just didn't feel like it was right. It didn't feel right. So that's what I did. But as far as the other television goes, my new one, it's right here. And as you could definitely see, it, it almost, it does fit. It does just barely fit in there. Um... As you can tell, tell and all, all that. Hold on. Well, like, sorry about that. But like I say, you can tell that, you know, it is a little bit bigger. You know, it fits in there perfectly and everything. Because the one thing I learned when I was figuring this out is what they sell you on is the screen size. It's like the outer, the out, the outside of it, the like the borders that keep the screen in there that the smaller than the screen itself so they basically sell you on the screen not like the entire thing because if they wanted to be truthful they would say that it's a 28 inch to 32 inch television overall that's what they would sell you on but yeah everything is like i said set up you know and all that the um i th and like i said i think the sacrifice that i had to make here though was the fact that Basically, the video capture is now in here. You know, it's now in here, like I said. Because I think what happened was, um, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this. Uh, basically, because I had the PlayStation in the input and the HDMI going to switcher on the output, it got confused. But the moment I put the PlayStation, you know, right where it's at, if you could see that, in the third HDMI... It read it. It read it automatically. The second HDMI is the switcher, which was read automatically, you know, as the uh, Blu-ray player. And then the first HDMI port has the cable. So they, and they're all identified. I mean, this is a smart television, just like this is. This one is a smart television as well, because basically it'll read automatically. When you go to an HDMI port, after connecting something, it'll read it automatically. Like when I did the PlayStation, it read it because I had a PlayStation app on it ready to go. And now I can use the remote that came with the TV to go to HDMI 3 for the PlayStation and it'll automatically come on. And it'll automatically come on. Um, and, and then like I said, I go to HDMI 2 to the, to the switcher and I could play the, uh, the Ultra Blu-ray. I could play the... Um, Xbox, I could play the Rootco and uh, the DVD, you know, and all that. I can do, I can play all that. But the only, the only one though that allows me to uh, listen to stuff through these speakers in my home theater, as far as I know, um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I think, is the Ultra Blue, is the Ultra HD Blu-ray player. That's the only one that allows me to do it. 
But that's only, the catch is it's only with ultra Blu-ray disc. Because, excuse me, but because when I tried it with uh, regular Blu-rays and DVDs, it didn't do it. It only did it with the ultra Blu-ray. I guess trying to sell on the point that, hey, listen to the difference in sound and all that, if you will, along with the, the picture. So yeah, those are the only um, changes that needed to be made. I think I could still use the video capture device, but it's going to have to be like with the Xbox and all that. Because like I said earlier, uh, the PlayStation, you could live stream that through YouTube and all that. Um, now, as far as like the remote goes, the remote is right here. And it's a smart remote because, like I said, it allows me to to do a lot with it. And uh, basically, this remote, when I turn it on, I'm just going to do the power here. And you see that come on. And um, hold on, I had to mute it right there. Uh, but basically, you could see right there, it comes up with the with the apps. Like, you go to the middle here to this button and it shows you the apps and it has a majority of the apps you want uh, and even has some um, that you don't have yet like I just recently add, added right here these three little recent ones I added Disney Plus WWE and HBO Max uh, in fact let me zoom in on that a little bit but those are the ones and then the PlayStation run right here like the PlayStation 4 it already knows what that is Blu-ray, it already knows what it is. And these are represented by the um by the uh by the HDMIs. And then you got Voodoo and Internet, YouTube, Apple TV. I still have to sign in on Prime and Hulu and then maybe test out Apple and see what happens. Um then they got Xfinity and it shows you right there that it can uh info. If you like info, you want info, boom. Like info here, let's see what the info is. It brings up the info, so that's pretty cool. It basically becomes your new uh, smart tele smart deal and all that. And uh, this is for the Sony right here, I think. It's the Sony one. The Sony, Sony the TV shows. And then the Sony TV. You got search. You got source. And this is the source one right here. So you see it has TV, Samsung Plus, TV Plus, which is the own network. It has Xfinity, that's the one it's on right now. It has uh, Blu-ray right there in the middle, which is the switcher. And then the um, PlayStation, which is off right now. And it's represented by these little dots at the checkpoint there. is telling you it's on. The power button tells you it's off. And then you got remote access and all that, which you can connect your phone with if it has that. Then you have your uh, quick settings. Like here you have Emmanuel, you have like... Uh, you have the different picture settings like that's natural that's movie that's dynamic and then that's standard which a lot of people use and then you have the sound mode which is amplify standard optimized and which optimizes audio obviously audio automatically does it and you have amplified and then you have the option for tv speakers which is like sound input like the optical and all that so, yeah, you have a lot of these here. So it's pretty cool. It's really good. And um, let me put this back on. And it turns off automatically just like that. Just like it opened up, like it turned on, it turns off the same way. Uh, but yeah, basically it's great. It really works. Um, I like it. And again, like I said, the, the, the movement... The movement with the 4K is just, it's just tremendous. There's, there's nothing like it because, again, it feels like you're in real time. It feels like, like when, when you're watching a movie like Draft Day or whatever, or you're watching G.I. Joe, the movie, the original animated series, or even the 86 uh, Transformers movie, there are certain panning, there are certain scenes that kind of have this panning across them, that goes across them, and it feels fluid. It feels, it feels, like it's happening, even though, like, let's say, even if it's animated, it feels like it's legitimately happening right then and there, right now. That's how, <laughs> that's how fluid and beautiful it looks. And it does, like I said, it lives up to the hype of being that way. It lives up to the hype 
uh, you could see more detail. Even when you're watching a video that's in 720, you can see more detail. You can see a lot of that. So it's pretty cool. It's really good. It's really cool. Um, but anyway, though, guys, just wanted to do this follow-up on my package opening yesterday. Uh, follow-up on, you know, my uh, follow-up overview, if you will, on my new 4K, on my new Samsung 4K QLED television, 32-inch. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you've bought the 40... Let me, let me know if you bought the 32-inch Samsung of 4K recently, or you're considering it. Let me know down below what your thoughts are. What were your first impressions with 4K when you saw it? Not only it displayed, but when you got it home into your house. What were your first thoughts? Comment down below. I'll talk to you all later. God bless. Take care.